Hey, it's Yazi, and the Flesh and Blood card game comes out tomorrow, or at least for when I'm recording this, um, which will probably be coming out tomorrow as well. And I thought I'd give you some ideas of what cards I think are great to play, um, and maybe some underrated cards that people really haven't looked at yet. I'll also be going over places within Sydney to play the card game, um, and I'll probably leave something at the end to show where all the New Zealand players will be able to play. Even though I think a lot of people have already seen it on the Flesh and Blood Facebook page. So the first card I want to look at is Blood Rush Below. It's a Mythic Brute card, and it has the, the effect to basically gain two attack this whole turn and draw two cards. Now all the class Mythic cards are all going to be worth something and they all do something really great. But Blood Rush Below is a very good card because it pitches for two, it costs one, and it has the potential to draw two cards. Now if you're going to be building a deck for Brute, most of your attacks are going to be sitting around six attack anyways. So I feel like Blood Rush Below will be one of those good cards to keep. Next one is Enlightened Strike. This is a very strong card that a lot of people have pointed out to me that's very strong. Personally, I don't like it too much, and the main reason why is that it only pitches for one, and it's technically a 3 cost 5 attack, or 7 attack. Um, but that's the way I look at it, and the main reason why is that you need to pit, put a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. Though a lot of ninja players have said that they'll be picking up this card, and a lot of um, Guardian players have said they're going to pick up this card as well, seeing as Guardian doesn't have a lot of those chip damage in their decks. Another card that I wanted to look at is Reckless Swing. It's a 0 cost, 3 pitch, 4 defense, brute defense reaction. If you discard a 6 or more attack, deal 2 damage to your opponent. It's an easy way to get in that little chip damage. Um, unfortunately, the discarding off this card won't trigger Rina, uh, won't trigger Rina. Um, but I guess that's something that we can live with. Though discarding a card from your hand can be not the, not the greatest idea. Being able to deal that little extra 2 damage while you're in your opponent's turn could be something very good. The next two I want to put into a package which is the Regurgitating Slog and Slogism package. I feel like this will easily slot into Guardian. It's a very big hitting attack that, that at least Guardian on their own doesn't really have that little bit of chip damage in there. Maybe not a lot of people will be playing the Slogism Regurgitating Slog combo, though I can see a lot of people just using the slogism as a defense and then using regurgitating the slog as an attack. It's an idea, but I it's one it's basically one of the only good generics out there right now that's an, a good attack. Smash Instinct in my opinion is probably the best brute attack. Main reason why is it comes with intimidate. It does cost 3 to use, though if you're playing brute in most builds, you will be able to pitch enough to get this off. Tome of Fendel is everyone's pot of greed. It may not be the greatest right now. A lot of people are saying that they're going to mix it with all the the time snap potion and all that to get those extra turns. Though, being able to keep all those in your hand for so long I think is something that a lot of people are forgetting about. It's a good card, but it'll probably be a better card down the track once everyone starts being able to play a bit more controlly, in my opinion. Barraging Beatdown is, I think, the strongest brute card to be printed so far. It's a zero cost with Intimidate, which is pretty strong on its own, but if your opponent isn't defending with two or, two or more cards from their hand, it does buff the attack as well. Um, I feel like a lot of brute decks will be able to just slot this into most of their decks, as if you want to discard cards from your hand, you can just smash this down first, and then you're able to discard 6 costs a lot more easier with this. Stonewall Confidence, I feel like, is going to be one of the bigger benefits of why aggro will not take over the control of the meta. As just by putting up one of these is going to stop most of, most of ninja attacks and probably most of brute attacks from being able to roll over a guardian. The more Guardians in the format, I believe, is probably going to be for the better, rather than more of the Ninja players, as it's probably going to turn into. But Guardian will probably be able to stop that, and the main card, I believe, is Stonewall Confidence, putting that block in front of everyone. Ancestral Powerment is the Ninja Reaction card that everyone's looking at to get. It will allow all your Mugenshi releases to hit, as this is a zero mana, one attack draw card. You can't ask for anything better than a ninja attack reaction. On top of that, it's also blocking for three. Whelming Gust Wave will probably be one of the more expensive commons, 
as Mugen Shi release revolves around using this card. Not much to say, but most people will probably be running nine of these, in my opinion. Iron Song Determination. It gives your weapon dominate in one attack and has go again. If you want your weapon to keep keep sticking and hitting your opponent, this is probably one of the good cards to keep in there so that you can start stacking all of your attack buffs off your weapon. Out of the three potions that were released, I believe Energy Potion is going to be maybe the most sought out one. And that's mainly because, yes, Time Snap Potion can extend a lot of plays in a way, though Energy Potion is a free two resource, which Guardian's going to need which Ninja can use to hit for plus 15 with Lord of Wind. Brute can use this, so they can slam out a lot of attacks in one turn. So I feel like Energy Potion is going to be the more sought out one over Time Snap Potion and Crazy Brew. As I've stated before, I feel like Scar for Scar is going to be one of the stronger cards as well. Um, every single iteration of this is strong in most decks, as it will be able to push your aggressive plays rather than playing defensive. I've dabbled on the idea of playing an aggressive guardian type of build with this, just because how strong Scar for Scar was in the demo decks. And the last card that I wanted to look at is Sink Below. Sink Below is a card that I don't think I've heard anyone talk about except one other person. This is your de generic defense reaction, which will allow you to cycle cards through your hand. Now we all know you draw cards at the end of your turn rather than the start of your turn, so with this card, you'll be able to set up a lot of attacks and also a lot of resource requirements that you need to pitch at the start of your turn. Now, I've called every single Sydney place that at least I know about, and I can only find two places that are already going to stock Flesh and Blood and have a weekly tournament for that. And so far, that's Game Traders in Penrith. They'll be holding their events on Saturday most probably. I, for one, will be there every single week. And the other one is Games Cube in Parramatta, which they'll be hosting their events on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. When I called these places, they weren't sure on what procedures were and everything that was going to happen with the game so far, as far as tournaments go. Though I believe every store that's getting this game in will be getting their leaflets either today or tomorrow to tell them how to run the events. The amount of stores that have really picked up this game is really lackluster in my opinion. I really urge for you to tell any of your friends to play this game, as right now it just feels like that hidden gem, the needle in the haystack. I know a few other games are dying off slowly and right now I think we're in a lot of peak seasons where YCS is coming up and apparently Magic is having their big events as well. Hearthstone's having all of its events and all their controversies right now. And it feels like we're just getting drowned out right now. Definitely talk to your local stores about this game if you really want them to play. And if you're within the Sydney area, I don't mind coming down at least trying to teach them or at least persuade them to get the stock in. As maybe two locals every week isn't enough for most people. Our Facebook page still only has about 400 plays in it so far. Though, probably give it a month or two and we may double that. If there's anything that you guys can think about that I should be doing to try and promote this game a lot more, I definitely will take your opinion on. And I'll be trying to contact the guys at Flesh and Blood to see if I can sort out some more things for this game within Sydney. For now, that's the video. I'll be bringing out deck profiles as soon as I get my hands on these cards and I'll see you in the next video.